Let's open the patch notes. First of all, the B is offline. Good to hear. Let's just post that on. Um, forums. Let's make some havoc. Uh, let's just go to there. Go. Hey. Okay. For everybody who's interested in actually commenting on this uh, topic, you can actually go to there. I'm going to go over the roadmap. The roadmap is what people probably will see uh, going on the most of the times. Um, so yeah. A, P, B, dead or alive. Probably it's not surviving. Let's just say that. Um, hello everyone. This will be my third state of the game post for APB. Mostly they say the third state is the lost. So the third state is at this moment being used. I find each year I get a little later with these roadmaps because it takes nearly a month to decompress the previous 12 and find the time to write out my thoughts. These are the thoughts of Matt Scott, not mine, just saying. Similar to last year, I took some time off at the end of 2021, but this time it was to get married. After that, I took a couple weeks to sit with APB and to decide how I want to proceed. So congrats to Matt Scott on getting married. Uh, now to APB stuff. 
Um, he's proceeding with it. Little Orbit had a very weird 2021. On the one hand, our external consulting project uh, went quite well. We helped another publishing partner rebuild one of their games. And we're about halfway through a massive new game for a different publishing partner. Are you working on APB or are you basically working on another game? That's the first question. We also have several upcoming announcements coming soon for both internal and external projects that I'm very excited about. Internal and external projects on not APB related stuff, probably. And while these announcements won't be specifically about APB, these accomplishments help us stay healthy. So we can continue to try get APB where I want it. Yeah, we seen where you wanted it. I'm going to do it on a serious voice. Sorry. On the other hand, APB was a mess this year. In January, we had a pretty good strategy for migrating code out of 120 into 2.2. First question on that uh, question. Where's 2.1? Why did you go to 2.2? And why are you quitting 2.2 now? We found some folks with experience on Unreal 3. Try them out. Okay. Must be hard. Made some changes. Tried new candidates out. Probably those people weren't good enough. I got involved personally to help migrate several systems. Okay, th that's the end. Okay. I felt pretty good. Around mid-year, with the progress that strategy was showing, it seemed like we were down to only a couple areas blocking us. Sorry. From running around in financial. To get solid benchmark. I'm tired. It's late. It was then that we started hitting the landmines. Something's gonna happen. Our forward momentum screeched to a halt as several needle in a haystack issues popped up. We continued to pour effort into the project, but it was very slow going. November happened. November seemed uh, to pick up steam again, and I held out hope that by the end of the year, we could finally show off a significant update. Guess that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. But after nearly a month into 2022, we're still not there. We made significant strides and the new APB 2.2 code base is closer to 120 than any previous iteration. Uh, we can run around in districts on less optimized debug builds, but getting the data cooked and compressed for a release build that we can provide to users has proven to be impossible. Ooh, why am I hot yawning? Fuck, there's not the time to actually yawn. The crux of the issue is that 120 code doesn't want to play nicely on the 2.2 upgrade. While half of our packages have been recently copied from 120 and go through an automated upgrade progress, a process to work in 2.2, the other half of our packages are necessarily from 2.2 because they support newer features of the Unreal Engine. For the purpose of cooking and compressing the data, every item has to be perfectly aligned. Otherwise, that version of the game crashes. Okay. 
Uh, the problem has become figuring out which packages should stay and which packages should merge in. In some cases, this means figuring out exactly which objects in each package are complicate, uh, compatible, sorry, compatible and which aren't. To put this into context, imagine uh, you were building a Lego castle out of a million pieces. Ideally, you would be able to add parts in your castle in chunks. For example, the drawing bridge set plus the turret set. Okay, obvious. Only, there is a wrinkle. Not only do some of the sets not fit together, some unknown number of blocks in the draw, br uh, draw bridge set hate the that hate the turret set and make everything fall down if they are included. So basically you have a Lego castle that you need to destroy and rebuild. And the rebuilding of that Lego castle, like you are right now with the bridge and you finish the bridge and that cannon and it's not actually fitting anymore on that bridge because you lost some pieces probably who knows uh but this is actually the same thing they say so apb exists out of chunks and the chunks aren't compatible with each other that's what i get from this so what are the chunks that are not compatible are it important things? Are it not important things? Can they be implemented later on? Can they not be implemented later on? That's the biggest question. I don't know. Probably they know better. Yeah. That's it, I guess. At this point, I have taken a step back and re-evaluated the entire approach. Well, that's a late re-evaluation, mate. I feel like we spent all year trying to force the stars to align in this giant code base so we could hit a home run and deliver the entire new game. Here you go. Hmm. Sorry, it failed. Um, while the existing game and player based suffered, uh, we could easily spend the next year attempting to do the same thing. And while we might get over some of these hurdles, I feel like there are more unknowns uh, around the corner that could block our efforts again. So, if I read the whole text that he uh, has here, he has marri been married. 2.2 .2 failed. And um, the rest, we're back at 120, I guess. So yeah, so we're going to change the strategies for 2022. We will be freezing the 2.2 code base and switching back to development on 120. So they freeze the 2.2 code. What does this mean? This means that in the 2.2 version will not come out in 2022. This means they are going to work on the 120 and revisioning it to a 1.30 code repository. Now I have the question, if we have the 1.30, what is the goal at 1.30? Will they actually go to the 2.2 again or will they call it 2.3 i have no idea or will they actually go further with the 1.3 that are steps that i actually would like to actually ask matt scott personally but uh, i hope i can actually contact him about this maybe we can do a stream together who knows uh but yeah we will see uh, we will be upgrading the APB 130 code base so we can use modern compilers like Visual Studio 2019 instead of 2012. 
Congrats. You upgraded. Let's, let's just say that. We will be upgrading APB 130 to a 64-bit by upgrading our libraries to the same version already in use in APB 2.2. We already have all the code modifications in APB 2.2 to support these newer libraries. So the libraries in 2.2 are actually compatible with the actually uh, 3.0 Unreal Engine. If this is correct. This is what I actually understand out of it. Uh, we will address the RTX crashes and frame rate uh, hitches that are based on the current 32-bit memory limitations. If we go to a 64-bit, will the 32-bit memory limitations uh, not be needed anymore? I have no idea what actually they mean with the 64-bit and the 32-bit uh, memory limitations. Uh, does the RTX only has 32 bit? I thought it had 64 bit only. I'm not sure about these things. Um, what this means, particularly, is that rather than chase large engine upgrade uh, that remains out of reach, uh, we can focus on updates that serve our current player base now. So you guys can finally benefit fr uh, from some of our work. Well, the last year we have seen your work and it wasn't really pretty uh, decent. Let us just say it like that. It's fair to say that it wasn't decent because we didn't see anything. Um, after that, I want uh, to do a series of smaller sprints that can each rele uh, be released to players. So, now is the question. When are we going to get 1.30? Is it this month? Is it next month? Is it the end of the year? At this moment, we are four years into Allo. No, three years into Allo that bought uh, APB. We are three years that uh, Allo has been buying APB. We're going to the fourth year this year. Um, so, when are we going to get 1.30? Uh, I hope it's actually soon, because I would like to actually see what is actually going to happen with APB, if this is going to work. I'm right now thinking about a lot of things in my head, sadly enough. So yeah, backport the cooked packages, uh, package system into 1.30. Uh, this will massively improve load times. I doubt the load times. We don't really care about load times. I never actually seen anyone care about load time. Yeah, you need time to load in. I have no problems with that taking five minutes. Maybe on my device it's time it's five minutes. Maybe on another device it's instantly. Is device out of device? Improved load times, what are you going to uh, change? Uh, the um, loading screens? I don't know. I wish they actually changed the loading screen from the start. Like the login screen, I wish they did that. Like totally change, uh, reverted that to the normal thing that we had. It was 10 times nicer. Uh, they still didn't do it. I hope they will do it in a 130. Uh, backport uh, the newer netco, uh, network code from 2.2, which will enable us to continue development on cross world play in 1.30. Backport the DirectX 11 render and uh, potentially a DirectX 12 render as well. Don't make it too complicated, thank you. We have an old game. It's going with a stick. No. Treat it gently. Don't be like some people in um, homes. That they don't look to the old elder people. Just don't be like that. To APB. Thank you. Uh, make a pass on fixing bad geometry 
and collisions that exist in the game today. Finally, they notice us. Those collisions. <sighs> Backport console support for Xbox One. Xbox X, PS4, and PS5, and make minimum changes to the UI. So Xbox One gets the update that they were waiting for. Finally? Or is Sony going to say no? I don't know. Please, more info. Thank you. Essentially, we've wasted enough time trying to make the leap forward into code base that has struggled for years. Yeah, it's been two years, mate. Now, since the code bases are so similar after our efforts in 2021, we will be packaging and choosing bits to pull into the current game till we get all of the same features I wanted for 2.2. So, 2.2 is now 1.3 because you are going to make everything that you want to be put in 2.2 in 1.3. So, we are getting our new contact. We are going to get our new car. Um, will cars be updated like they don't drive to the left constantly? Uh, collisions going to be changing? Um, oh yeah, the shooting, shooting lines. We're going to get that. I don't see it, but... Okay. I don't know. It has been a long and bumpy ride, but to everyone who continues to stick with us and enjoy APB, thank you very much. We will get there. Thanks, Matt. He got married, huh? Yeah, true. He got married. <sighs> Congrats on being married. So, what do you guys think? Be fair, throw it out, say it all, express your feelings, have a good cry. And Matt Scott got uh, married. Uh, snap. I will be posting this also on YouTube. Just saying. I will be posting this tomorrow on YouTube. Nothing will happen and change. Okay. 100%. Okay. So we're not getting 1.30. Okay. I agree. Anyone else? I'll agree with everything. Go ham. Enjoy yourself. That gave me a mail. I don't uh, want to speak about this. Yeah. It's hard to speak about it, I know.
We're gonna have a big cry. I'm gonna cry in my bed. Ten years into vain. Eleven years into vain. No, twelve years into vain. Five years it will take. In 2025, APB will actually be shut down. They get five years to actually uh, do something. In 2024, 2025, APB will shut down. Even if there's only 200 people playing and they are going to stay there, Little Obit didn't do anything. They worked on another game. They added uh, stuff to their um, view list. They did lots of things. APB had to suffer. <sighs> Let's all pray in the name of the APB and the woman who bared it and David Jones who created it and the guy who sat me here till after 12 years praying to see APB one more year alive. Amen. APB is far from being a priority for them, it seems. Yep. Basically done. They want to update the game instead of making a new one based on this. It was so many time uh, to make uh, something, but nothing. Like, I can understand that people need to learn the code, need to learn uh, stuff, but I don't understand. Like, they get so far and then... Down. <laughs> They're stuck. They don't know. They have no idea. I have no idea myself, but they have no idea what they're doing. That's how it goes. Like they do everything and everything works and everything is good and everything is oh awesome. And they show us stuff and they uh, praise us stuff and they're promoting us stuff. And they say stuff that is uh, not true and you go further. That's how far we are. This is how far we get. 130 is the last update. Why are you wondering? No. I don't wonder. Like. We know the fact right now. There's a fact. I'm just wondering what they are going to do. Like, they are going to do 130? Are they going to 140? Are they going to um, get the ads into the game? Are they going to... Yeah, the company with the ads, what's going to happen with that? Ads are not going to be added in the game because 3.0 can't run it. It just can't. No ads for APB. Wood wood. I'm happy. I guess we need to cry. Get it. If people are interested in actually talking about this stuff, 
you can. Um, it's a cry session today. Big cry session today. Cree all you want. Roses are red, violets are blue. Time to get ripped. That's what you need to do. Well, at least I can uh, provide you to that. Yeah, true. Okay, so if you guys want to cry in this post, thank you, there we go. Let's see if somebody posts something, maybe not. Nobody posts anything, who cares? All well, right, now these days in uh, the APB forms, let's go to the topic that everybody wants to read. The roadmap discussion. APB 2022. Edited by Confair. D2. D2. Uh, I can't speak anymore. Wow. 2022 roadmap can be read here. Uh, HTTP, we already read it. Can't say I'm disappointed, but I understand the development hell that the new engine has been in for a while now. I'm just gutted. That until the RTX crashes get fixed, I can jump into the game for more than half an hour these days without crashing to desktop. And while I'm happy that these issues are on the roadmap for updating the current version of the game, does this mean I'm going to have to wait another year before being able to play the game again? Yeah, it's combat magic. He's being kind. Is combat medic actually online? Would be actually awesome to actually talk to him right now. Yeah, wait another year. Uh, feeling a bit disheartened is all. Will there even be players left? Playing the game when I finally can get back into the game to play it. Are Hello going to advertise the current version of the game when it's updated instead of the engine? Upgrade. Since it's no longer being worked on, I have a few questions, but most of all, I would just like to be able to play again without crashing every 5 fucking minutes. Hopefully the RTX issues will be fixed sooner rather than later. Still holding out hope anyway. Reads Combat Medic 02. Combat Medic the True Believer. I have no idea, Z. GTA 5 roleplay is not my thing. I miss not Zombie Biscuit and hope she is doing well. Okay, good to know. I think a lot of people for a long time saw the engine upgrade like a remastering of APB with the offering of better performance potential uh, for new technology to be utilized. It was an exciting thought. Yeah, that's true. But I think this announcement has been a realistic review of the complicated, unique creature that APB is with its coding and engine. Personally, I feel 
a level of acceptance of the facts and I think we all knew deep down that this was likely to be the outcome. I don't know what uh, he uh, is talking about. I did one minute ago by a mod. Yeah. Uh, Hoomst asked, uh, asked what? I spent too much money for this game to just die out. I'm sorry, but we finally know that it actually died. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Uh, can somebody try to actually uh, contact uh, Combat Medic? Yes, please. Thank you, please. It was all a crook to lie to get us few legits to buy their uh, trash guns. Uh, they removed the anti cheat, removed a lot of the fun factors, nerfing the wheelies from uh, the Vegas after people bought them. Then uh, they disagreed uh, after listening to the non names trolls. Uh, that come in here instead of listening to the playing customers letting all kinds of uh, hackers in as soon as uh, the the five legit legits in na started complaining they started their cancel culture program where the criminals that work for the forum started going, going after legits okay uh let's remember before this creation, uh, we had maybe five goals and five non-goals in all of NA. Now we've uh, got 50 goals uh, with loose names like 3x6922, all aimbotting using hacks and uh, brought off the site that uh, I believe Allo owns. What? Why are people so stupid? Oh my god. Like, Allo owns a hacking site? Are you fucking kidding me? Why else would uh, they knowingly let hackers into bronze? Knowing it would push out the few legits. Only reason is that they are making more money off the hack sites uh, than through armors. At least you read it. This is just one of the biggest flops, like, in so long. 18 US code, blah blah, uh, fraud by wire, radio or television. Right. Okay. Remember Riot? Riot was something new that was already in the game by G1, but G1 never actually finished it. Allo finished it or tried to finish it, made something out of it, made something interesting that G1 wasn't going to do. That's what I heard. And then it finished. Like the idea to actually come up with the uh, with the fun uh, doings aside from the game was actually very fun. But then the game, yeah, you know. Probably you don't know because I was just throwing up. But okay. Uh, 2018, we have upgraded the engine to implement some of the features that will fix the game. Actually, we're just gonna implement them into an old version, lol. The new meme to uh, APB, 2018-2022. What am I missing? If you could do that, why didn't you do it from the start? 
like they don't know what will actually happen if they actually do those fixes i can understand that they don't understand or don't know what is going to happen with those fixes but i don't understand that it takes so long to actually understand that that's the issue but they don't know from the start okay understandable but if you are actually already a year in it and you can't actually figure that out yeah then you are actually two years in it obvious <laughs> Um, also, uh, what about the port to UE4? Is it still happening? Yeah, never mind that. UE4, no, never mind. See ya, bye bye. Second team, Uruguay Gamiolek. Okay, I can still remember the post uh, from, I believe, it was Tix. Engine upgrade was very close to completion. No, didn't we actually get new servers? In 2013, 2014, like the overkill servers. Back in the day, it was called overkill. I remember because I was playing this game on um, five frames a second. Not 60 frames or 144 frames a second, two to five frames a second. And it took probably um, one second for one frame to actually load. So that was horrible to actually play. And then they announced the overkill servers. Those overkill servers made me actually play on 30 FPS. Now I'm playing on 60 FPS. It didn't get better. Tix was really honest about what she said. A lot of the things uh, were just made. Uh, and flat out lies. Ghost, please don't protect ticks. Don't protect ticks on that matter. She said it. It was close to completion. We're 2022. It's still not here. And that's an SPCT. Okay, one thing we can do, we can't believe SPCTs anymore. So, goodbye Coast, it was a pleasure. Uh, go play Ubo. Uh, what this means? <coughs> oh, sorry about my sneezing. <coughs> my cat made me allergic. What this means, particularly, is that rather uh, the Chase Large engine upgrade that remains out of the reach. Well, uh, we can focus on updates. Yeah. So we'll see the light soon. Yeah. And you were worried about the silence surrounding the game. Patience is a sweet virtue. <laughs> they are going to put 130 on consoles. They are going to add everything that works to 130. That's what I think. So what is the smart thing? We are going to get what? Consoles have, and consoles are going to get what we have. That doesn't change anything for consoles. Sadly enough. Uh, Zeke, unban everybody. If possible. Like, this is actually a time where I'm just unbanning everybody.
You can do it um, separately, like in one go. Uh, first I need to fix uh, PC, then consoles. Yeah, probably. Uh, console needs also fixes. Like, this Dark Zero. Yeah, fuck this. I'm just going to look for medic, 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 medic. Um, Is Merrick actually on here? No. Merrick is not on the APP uh, uh, official uh, community forums. Like, I want to talk to him, actually. Possible. Combat medic. Combat medic is not on any of the phones. Holy crap. He's not here. Is Mac also on Discord? Let's see. Let's see if I can actually get somebody to talk. He's also not in there. Why is everybody so difficult to actually uh, find? If you want to uh, talk about some stuff, uh, let me know. Um... No, APB has been... Uh... I got somebody that I talked to uh, previously. Talk about stuff. The Merc is going to uh, join me. Uh, hey. Mm. 
Hi. How are you doing? Good, I gotta get my headphones on. Yeah, take your time. We have a sad, sad day to experience. What? APB is dead. APB serves off offline. It will never come online anymore. It's done, it's over. What? Haven't you read the APB roadmap? Mm hmm. Yeah, what do you think? Uh. I just gotta wait. Like I've waited for the past 11 years. 11 years? Wow, it's not 12. I think it's been 12. I'm not. If it's being exact, if I'm remembering fucking July or something of 2010 or so, I think that's when it came out. Well, EA release, I think that's when it came out in July. Yeah, I know, but you don't have to be specific. Oh, man, I can't talk anymore. I think I read too much right now, and my head is actually not on the right place. Um, XI zone. Um, huh? oh no, somebody in the chat. Um, I'm live on the Twitch, by the way. Just saying. Yeah, you told me. Yeah. Um, no, it just sucks that, uh, yeah, that they are actually going to this measurement. Well, I can understand if they actually can't fix it to 2.2, yeah, then um, we can't actually go further. And they actually need to actually earn money too, in some way. But I mean, it's... they're, look they're yes. looking to get it to 64-bit as it being like an ergonomic step for people to be able to at least like enjoy the game at a level like with uh, the technology they have on the computers, 32-bit. Uh, at this point kind of is isn't sufficient because it's a it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, so the, the main thing is Is if they go and do that then they can work up from it So they have co like I know is for sure They have one coder from RTW and they have three other supplementaries that have been uh, on their team Setting it over so now they're looking at it instead of trying to overhaul it over now. They're gonna do it later So they need to work with what we have and then change the repository or how they said it. Do you think um, that they will go back to 2.2? Um, they're gonna remake it. I'm pretty sure they're they're gonna get to it, and it's not gonna be as bad as what the uh, the previous team did. Where okay, we have console version. Console version works. Uh, here we have PC version. PC so version doesn't work. We're just C1. gonna keep working on. That yeah. was C1, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, so they're now we. They're see... not gonna. Yes. They're not going to do run that BS because Little Orbit before they were Little Orbit, they're um they're that Australian company. It's got like their old logo with something, some cartoon with the glasses and like curly hair or something. And they're Australia, and they had worked on a bunch of games for like other companies. So they built up, <clears throat> they built up that uh that reputation and resource, and they blew the whistle on it. And they're like, hey, this is kind of BS what you guys are doing with this game. And they just like went out and acquired it. Because like, this is bullshit. We don't like what you're doing with this potential IP. Um, and so in, now it's as far as like I see, because of, for the time I've been around, is that it's going to go from, okay, we're at 1.2 and we're going to go 1.3. But this is our version of 1.3, not previous companies 1.3. We're not going to BS it and try to like money grab and pull from you guys and the console version is going to be the one that only has any light of a damn upgrade we, we don't so, know what is actually going to be in one thirty like uh 1.3 and uh coming up um like he had the vision of 2.2 he wants to actually have apb2 you can actually see that he wants to go for apb2 um but he can't because of certain aspects yeah, I just I just said that because of yeah, what the okay. previous company was going with from the one point two to the one point three to <coughs> to the two point two, so it's going laps back because it was gamers first and going and making this version that doesn't work the PC and, and didn't work right or compile. Now it's okay. We're gonna start from that point, but it's not that company. It's us. We're actually gonna be fixing it. We're gonna be focusing on getting it right. Okay. So like for I know that they were talking about um like uh, set it 
set it back to DirectX 11, and then go to 12 so that they can actually like uh, more, um, so it can be more optimized. And so... so like I've seen this thing go on with Star Citizen. This is what they're trying to do too, is get the technology to where that the GPU CPU doesn't work as hard. And that's the thing when you're running on like such old tech, it's it's told the process in a certain way because when you have old games like APB, it's so used to working on a CPU and not utilizing your GPU at all. Right. So then. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What? Um, if I actually read the roadmap, like you are talking about the steps and steps that they are going to do uh, to uh, after one point thirty, but reading this roadmap is actually. For those who actually focus on the 2.2 engine, very devastating. Like this actually is the end of APB. Or do you have actually another opinion about it? Uh, I'm just gonna wait like I've had for the 12 years. And as far as I know, this this company has a reputation. Like I started getting. I didn't start getting into APB because of G1. I continued being with APB because of G1, because I was playing Warrock, because I was playing their other games at the time. And I, as it was, like, I was an adolescent, and I didn't know the inner workings of what they were until I followed up further with APB and its development. So Little Orbit has a reputation. They have infrastructure already to, like, work up from. They have other projects that they work on that are separate teams. So these guys, like, have no excuse to BS and be at, like, oh, well... We give up or we're going to give you a half-assed product like the previous company did okay so they they actually have something like uh, to be honest much of a little bit is for me actually unknown i know them from barbie Th that's the game that i actually know them from because yeah somebody i needed to buy actually a barbie game for somebody and for somebody's uh, birthday and yeah i need to give uh them something I bought a Barbie game and little little bit was on it. Uh, okay, sure. That's how far my knowledge goes uh, of little little bit. Uh, but yeah, for me it's actually if I read this, okay, for me it's actually a deep dive. Like APB is going to die. You definitely get those feelings back. Like everything is going to shit. It's going to shit, but as I hear that you, what you are actually saying is that um, it's not over yet. Well, I mean, yeah, like you're coming and calling me and saying like the first thing is like it's over. Like a Kotaku article or something, like throwing it out be like buzzwords and things or overreacting. Like I've been around this game for a long time and seen enough of this happen. But like these guys are being very open about it and like what they have to do versus... Okay, guys, um, back burner. Yeah, we're just, uh, <clears throat> we're going to work on it. Yup, we'll get to it. That's like all it was for the previous company. It was like, oh, uh, we hit a wall, uh, back burner. Oh, uh, this is, uh, it's not too complex, but we're working on it. Oh, that's not in our roadmap plan, or that's not in our alignment for like future work. Like it would just be the, the same cycle over and over. And this company, has just at least been honest about it. And a lot of people, uh, especially for like a lot of games in development, is the issue of people not taking COVID into consideration of how there was this huge lapse of time where like everybody got hit. Like there was this, there was this means of momentum that was like building for people making product or running their businesses or companies, but everybody was affected by it or they had to go work remotely. And then it really restricted their workflow. And that's like a thing that I see with the game. And people will be like, oh, excuse. I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's more of an explanation of a situation because an excuse would be, oh, we didn't get any work done because of, because of COVID. But despite COVID going on, they're going and doing this and they are still getting something through. Like, because <clears throat> it, it's like everybody experienced it. It wasn't just Little Orbit. And I know people like to hyper-focus on a product that they like and they're like, APB is dealing with this. You know, this is absolute BS, you know, that this is dumb. How could they do this? Uh, and don't think of how other people are affected besides something that they care about. And that's the thing. I, I get that compassion, you know, that feeling that some people have that be it like uh, you worked on something, you know, like you look at APB like a birdhouse that like 
you didn't build, but you got to see it get built and you used it. And then somebody just smashes it and all that emotion and feeling that you had built into that time that you had it over, like, you know, seeing the function of it, seeing APB go, all the experiences, everybody uh, integrating with each other, you seeing the birdhouse, the mm -hmm. migration, the seasons going by, the birds going in, the, the birds going out, yeah, and then yeah, some yeah, asshole some... kid smacks it with a fucking baseball bat and like it's it's gone or versus the upkeep of said birdhouse trying you know try to set that up and be it like it's, it's an emotional tie to it and i get it people feel very dedicated to it like i feel it but like the feeling that i get from apb and waiting i've carried that over to star citizen and all i do is just read posts i just read what the devs are saying versus i just play the game and the only social construct that i have is typing in district because there's a lot of players that do that. There's a lot yeah, of people too. that don't go out and go research or know things. Like, <clears throat> and it was frustrating for a long time for me playing this game because people were just like, it's it's a piece of shit of a game. It's bad. I don't like how this is. The devs are doing nothing. And then it's like, have you read the forms? Oh, I I, I, I don't need that. I don't need the forms. That's, that's for those like people who take this game seriously. You know? But you seem to be pretty frustrated. You know, you would go to the forums. You... You go look at the blog spot, you go to the Discord, and people don't want to take that extra step as much as, like, they say they like it. It's a lot of people that would rather complain than make the effort to research something. Cool. Um, so, I'm just uh, reading here that 64-bit uh, will be now used in the 130 and stuff. Uh, also, uh, what is your take on cross-world uh, play? Uh, as far as like they were going for that for crossplay, that was like social. So there's no uh, skill gap between people. Like there's a, a thing, for instance, <clears throat> in uh, War Thunder that exists. If you are on, um, if if you're using a controller, yes, not just specifically console, you can kind of soft lock a target, but like you can't shoot it. So there's some dudes in PC that hook up a controller. And they're in a tank and there's like a helicopter and airplane and they use the lock on feature to kind of like see the guy past the hill it's very faint but you can see it and it's it's not using a hack it, it's, it's built into the game it's it's an ergonomic set for console players and people in pc use it sometimes that that know about it so there's those limitations and things that where it's like should this be allowed here because of the disadvantage or the advantage or should it be allowed here again because of the advantage and disadvantage so because social is just a creation hub and people to hang out. That's the cosplay totally, that they were talking about. I'm not totally no fan of actually playing against console players. Like, okay, I'm a, no, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, social. I'm a PC player. I don't want to play against somebody who's actually playing on console. Console has all the skills. Same with racing games. Okay, with a console, you're going to have smoother steering than actually with uh, driving with arrows. Uh, yeah, there is... Only left or only right. There's no little left. There's no uh, big left and stuff. You, you don't have that. Uh, that frustrates you, me sometimes too. But yeah. If you plug a controller into PC, you can do that. That's what I do. Like I actually have a steering wheel. Yeah, I have a stick and throttle. If I'm actually playing like competitively and I have a, com a keyboard, I want to actually play against keyboard players. You know that feeling I have. I don't want to actually face somebody um, who gets actually a higher uh, performance out of playing another console. Not sure. Okay, they have their own choice and stuff, but I'm not really the person who would like to actually do that. I would rather play on Call of Duty with the keyboard than actually with the console. And how are they? they how are, are they next... playing better on console? How are they? How are they playing better than you on console if there's no lock-on feature? It's all analog. I have no idea if it's a lock-on feature, but... There is no lock-on feature. I have no idea, to be honest. Okay, so that's, that's why I'm educating you on it, and I'm, I'm being passive about yeah, it instead of aggressive. It's okay. So I, I was making the example of ergonomics with War Thunder, there being a tie between the combat. So on console, you cannot lock on people. So there there is a switch between pros and cons here like you were saying for driving when i play pb and i drive i like using my xbox controller and it's right there that's the advantage okay and that that goes in the same place on on console but on console i would lightly say you're at some bit of a disadvantage not because you can't lock on but because of how analog 
is what we experience in PC driving cars, I where see. it's tapping it to move it. So that movement is swapped, basically. Okay. So we have the advantage in FPS, but we have the minor disadvantage, I, I guess, the input. It's not as bad. I mean, like, it's just getting getting used to it with driving. But on console, mm. the driving feels smoother because the ergonomic or the peripheral input is the controller. And then FPS combat is just tack, 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 tack. You know, like, you, you just go five degrees instead of blending into a smooth because you, you don't want to move the controller because everything is, is a you know, a flick versus like you just moving a mouse That's and you neat. can plug a controller into PC anyway and like do it. Let's it's like I do with Star Citizen. I have my flight controller stick and throttle and then I have my mouse and keyboard and I have an Xbox controller and I use my Xbox controller as a as an acceleration dial or a throttle. So when I'm in my ground vehicles, I use the stick <clears throat> literally like a CVT. You know what a CVT like is for a car? Uh, between uh, your keyboard and uh, con uh, controller. Yeah. And stuff. Like I have, yeah. Like I just use the analog stick to change the throttle because on the keyboard for the key bindings, the key bindings for the ships, the spaceships throttle is different from the ground vehicles, and so that goes the same for my flight stick and my th and my throttle. Those are separate key bindings for the spaceships. So the Xbox controller, literally all I'm using on it is an analog stick, like a shifter. There's no gears, it's just like a CVT. I'm just moving it between 100% down to zero for max speed cap. Like, it, it's it's about doing it, experimenting it, figuring it out, like, knowing it's there. I, I'm, like, I don't see a problem with them being honest and saying this versus, like, what I saw for the past, like, 12 years is just, like, back burner. Oh, guys, we're not working on it. Well, we're working on it. We're doing this. Oh, don't worry about it. And it's a pain. It was it was really bad because I'm 27 now, and going through and seeing this game just constantly just back burner, back burner. We can't. It's not that we can't do it. It's that it's not our focus, and it was frustrating. But now, Little Orbit has always been like, "Hey, this is what we got so far. You know, here, here's what we're doing. Here's what we got." And then at least seeing this post and then being honest about it, like okay. it, you know, when you start with the little discrepancies of like, "Oh, the game doesn't use all my RAM. It uses 32 bit. It doesn't actually really use my GPU." And those are the first things that they're talking about is being like, okay, we want it to be 64 bit. We want it uh, to work on DirectX 12. Those are like baseline architecture things that it does not improve on content of the game, but it runs on you being able to run it. So if they were to go and get that done and then start working on content of the game, like I see that as, as a path, like really well, like I have to explain this for star citizen players too, because, um, if I'm saying an example of them looking at what is going to be present all the time and what is going to be built on top of it, your operating system, your RAM usage, your GPU usage is going to be a constant thing for everybody. So if they worked on that, like they say they want to, that I, I like that path that they're doing instead of, okay, we're going to put content in a shitty engine, like, a, you know, a really bad build, but they're doing the, the, uh, the they're doing the tech stuff first before game content stuff, which I'm I'm generally happy about and they're smart about making that process because I would rather have a smooth game that uses all of my technology in my seven-year-old desktop than them add content and I get stutters and nothing like buffers that well. Well, or... my setup is actually already 11 years old. So... Yeah, it's it, and, that, and that's the thing, you know, I, I talk about. Um, uh, uh, one example I could say for, uh, running requirements on games. Now this, this game isn't an FPS. This, this game isn't anything with driving. And you can look at this for a lot of communities that have big numbers, uh, because of the accessibility and the capability of playing the game is, uh, Undertale. I was always surprised by the amount of people that were into that damn game because it can run on anything. And so the less restrictions you have of technology or like power de um, tech demands for uh, programs and stuff like that, you'll generally have um, like a wider population that's able to access it. And that's the thing with APB, it's just not optimized, but they're taking that step so it can be optimized. I like that they're doing that first. Okay. Like we uh, want it to run better I'm, before we start adding things. I'm just going to say like reading this and seeing actually one year that uh, nothing actually happens or even yeah. longer than one year, this 
Next, what he just wrote is actually frustrating for some people. Like for me, it was actually frustrating. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like I see this actually as a big step back uh, from the community to us. Like a big step down. I just see that as it as a big step down of what they actually did. And I have just too much questions. Like some people also asked, uh, okay. Uh, why didn't you know, uh, notice this sooner? Like, I can understand that they can't notice that in 2018. I can agree on that. But why does it almost need to take four years to actually notice uh, something that uh, they need all the steps in? So APB... <clears throat> APB was made before the Unreal Development Kit. And that timeline is roughly just before, uh, before Gears of War. And I say, again, like Gears of War and APB are separate games, but I'm yeah, talking about technological advantages here for, um, for for the studios. And I'm gonna talk about game studios, but like the, the development suites. So when people were making games before the UDK was like out, it was, okay, we've got Unreal and we're gonna make a game off of Unreal as a base, but we're gonna make it our Unreal. And that was the problem is that <clears throat> Everything that was like as a base package was not created yet. So that's why APB, um, they have to have Androvald over like working on the engine, trying to translate it over to where it's like if they did hire people that knew Unreal from school or they were uh, game developer veterans, like it, it was easy for them to get into it because because, uh, oh, I know this product. I know this program. And that was the thing. They have to translate or convert <clears throat> this like unreal 2.9 busted system to get it to something that is mainstream and people know how to work with like it it's is like one of those the, the what stuff, the engine is actually very old and i yeah. doubt um there's a lot of people who know actually the engine still yeah but they they have those people that don't want to work with the game like you can look at omo it omoa cat and she like all the art that you see on that website majority of it that is like that pastel uh paintbrush art was made by her she doesn't want anything to do with this game and like andrew vault is like one of the few people that is like from rtw that, that like is still there like it's nice i love it hey kiyoki i see you don't worry um sorry i, I was listening so there's still somebody from rtw working yeah maybe yeah, they've been with them from like the beginning. He's been like their little clo their their code slave for like the time. Hey, you. Uh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, they've, they've nice information. Yeah, they've they've had a guy working with them like that. Understand it? It's like a guy like you could have some form of dialect or Egyptian that nobody understands, but one dude, and so like everybody's relying on the you know the one guy to set it up and be it like okay, this is this is what it means. This is how you can like work on it. Okay, this is how we, we can work with it. And if we got more people, we made it an easier way so everybody else could work with it. And you don't need me, uh, specifically. And that's like the, the, the main approach for it that I've seen them for the time. At least now, them being honest about this and saying, okay, we are going to go back is we're going to start with the build that we have and we're going to make this game work better. That's, that's what I say is like, there's the technological stuff and then there's the game content stuff. Like when I have, when we get new recruits in our, um, in our start star citizen organization, like there's just times I'll, I'll just go on a little rant and explain things to them and they feel more content because now they un understand the works of development. Like what's between like a live build, a test bed product, why this project that they're doing means something for everything else. Like if I'm talking about AI path node finding, which is I land on my pad little AIs come up, refuel, rearm my ship. And then people are like, well, that, that's not important to me. I'm like, whoa, 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 don't, don't you want that AI path node finding to work? So if you go do an FPS mission or like the AI seems a little bit intelligent, or if you like you land at an outpost, the AI responds to you or is receptive to what you're doing, or like you go down and the wildlife act a certain way, you know, it lets them set that up as like a base package or a suite. So people go into it and just click click options and set things up for in uh for in-house to make development a lot cleaner 
and that's why I see it for this is that what they're trying to what, what they're planning to go do is that okay, well, we can't get it to the engine now, so we're gonna work it up from the progress and things that we've made, and we're gonna build it up to this point, and then we're going to advance forward because they wanted to they wanted to head charge and do what the previous company wasn't doing and being honest about. And I'm happy that they're making this choice because at least it's okay. We want to get to this step first, and then we'll move on, versus just taking this big ass leap. Uh, okay. Um, to be honest, I won't stay positive about this game, and I won't stay positive on uh, what is actually happening. At this moment, yeah, just from reading this, I can be positive on on this post. Like, it's just because of the years that it actually took. I just can't get positive out, out of this post. I, I think I, I can agree that uh, uh, we need to actually wait uh, for the information that they are going to give us us about 1.30 like i would like to know what is actually coming up right now so uh, what is apb 1.3 uh, being about um how uh, will it change uh, apb uh what will they actually implement as uh stuff um are we going to see new stuff uh getting back and uh, they even uh, say improve load times and stuff. I don't see that actually being useful. That's my opinion. Like the massively improved load times. Like load times are load times. I don't really care how long the load time actually takes. Like, hey, if I need to join a game, if I go to Black Desert, for example, my load time is five minutes for actually getting in to server. Um, if I go to Call of Duty, for example, it's yeah, it also has a load time to actually load into the server. Sadly enough, it, PUBG is even worse than I'm actually flying already out of my plane before I actually see the server. But that aside, yeah. I don't okay, really so see. I've got a technological question for you for how yes. AP works. I I know the answer. Okay, so when somebody creates something. Mm -hmm. for their character and social where is that data stored like when you create customize a t-shirt and say you put uh, a monster energy logo or a weed leaf on your on your shirt oh so where, where is that that okay so that data stored yeah, so how does it get yes. okay so how does it get to your computer uh, um with localization file to that server yeah it's it's streamed content from the server to your computer so with load load times, the thing is, is that this game's content, it has like everything I see it, it's a canvas. And that's what it references itself off of. And it has to stream all this data into the game. And so there's like things like they talk about for load times, for instance, this is about techno Those like technical violets. ergonomics. This is what I was talking about earlier. So here's, here's one thing that could be that say if for some people, some customers, they want their, they want their product to be available to a wide variety of people. That's why I brought up um undertale earlier because of the technical requirements many people could get into the game because it's not 3d demanding it it just runs on game maker engine creator forget the name of it okay um the the thing is, is that uh say if there's a person with a low-end computer they don't have that much ram but uh they set some options on it there's a game that i used to play called mabinogi and it has a graphical option that is set so that only friends or certain people that you have on a whitelist will actually load for you. It'll actually stream the data in. It sits on your RAM or it sits on your graphical or your uh, your, your GPU VRAM. And uh, the, the way that works is that everybody that's standing around you that you don't care about, they're all in rows. They're in some base file that is in the base game and doesn't have to like really stream, constantly communicate between the game and the server. Yeah, it just has, I've seen that it before. Just has, yeah, an APB could literally... That, that's one improvement I'm talking about that they could set themselves to, for instance, that that loading time thing is that be it that it has like a default criminal, a default enforcer. It's like, I don't I don't care. My, my computer is garbage. I want to just play the game. The guy is my enemy. The guy is my 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 teammate. I don't care how they look. I care how I look because that's the image for APB. It's about, you know, character personality, what you want to resemble. 
And it's those little technological things that I'm saying by an example that that really helps that. So that's what I say for loading times too, is uh, so people don't have that as so much of an issue that it's comfortable because there's like a lot of the little things. Like I'm, I used to be a car mechanic. It's the little things like pennies make dollars. If I went and did a safety check or just did something like checked their tires, like their air pressure, or I checked their filter, little convenient things that I can do while the oil is coming out of it before I change the oil. And then people see that they're like, well, that wasn't part of the main job. But I really like that they looked at that and it made my life feel comfortable and convenient. And it's all these small little things that build up to big things that people see it with not just APB, but games in general. That is a buildup of just being like, oh, man, my my experience was nice. It was better than it was before. My experience was bad. And it all depends on the individual, like what you're saying about load times. You don't worry about it. But for that and in the end of it, for them setting these things up, they have to optimize it and taking care of the game technically and i'm saying like how the game runs i and that's what we're going for for the newer engine they do it this way that's that's solid i like that they're doing that because of how behind like the the way the the game translates with our hardware right now like what is it four years ago i still had a uh an 860 gt voodoo or it was like an 890 some old ass graphics card that is still in that big list of gpus that apb uses and that was like the roughly the only time I saw my game running smooth on an old GPU. But I have a 1060 supercharged six gigabyte from EVGA and it barely uses my GPU. It uses just my CPU. And then I have to, because I have an Intel CPU, I can like set it to just like only work on one thread because it wants to work on two or three threads in one core. And it's a pain in my ass because I have, I shouldn't have to do that myself. Like the game should be programmed like smart enough to could just do that itself and it doesn't. Now, I'm not displeased and be like, oh, I have to do it. This is a shit product. It's that I see the way it functions or like, oh, that that's an issue. And they don't have this set up the way that they should have it set up. Um, so them taking the approach of, OK, we're going to make the game work better versus previous devs being like, hey, guys, you want some new T-shirts and guns? You know, we want to have balance issues. <laughs> Let's get some new kits out. You know, they're really taking care of the product getting to that to the technological point versus just adding cash shop shit and i i love they're they're being very uh they're being open about it they're like i want to do this i want the game to work better versus okay we're going to jump into an uh, another engine so it can work way better but them seeing this and being like this is how we're going to step back and then we're going to work on this i'm i'm personally fine with it because i understand all the stuff that they're trying to do i'm not a game developer or anything but i followed the stuff enough I love learning things, so I'm not like a professional, but I understand the basis and see the same patterns between multiple game development studios and how something has to work or the way something is programmed. Okay. Uh, give me a sec. <sighs> Um, so yeah, uh, we got that then, all of it, I think. Uh, what? We got the roadmap all covered, I think. Yeah, it's, like, I, I, I like what they're aiming for. I'm comfortable. Like, they've been very open about everything. And if I, I know you like, you can go to the forums and see what other people are saying, because it's kind of like, you know, sharing, it empowers some people's opinion. They can see that somebody maybe has the same disagreement and it's like, yeah, I feel the same way, but it necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are the same party or it is right. Cause, uh, QV. Oh man, you just jump in QV. <laughs> he's been here for a while now. He's been, okay. he'd be, he's been listening. Okay. Uh, I'm just re reading here. Uh, your username uh, is not blah blah blah. He said something two minutes ago. Congrats on the wedding. Yeah, congrats to Matt on the wedding. Congrats. Um, as for APB, uh, what a waste. What did I say? Uh, this, uh, that it's a bit uh, of a cop out saying you can't add new stuff with uh, the current engine. 
while having already added new stuff before. Uh, now the four years are neglected, uh, four, uh, four years wasted basically. Uh, what he's uh, saying here, uh, APP system oh, that, actually That's works. not me by the way. If Kuve think that's not me, that's another guy, that's one of my friends. So I don't know. If Kuve was talking about, can you read what Merc just said back to us? I'm like, if I'm misunderstanding, I just want to be sure that is not me. That is, that is a friend of mine. Okay. I have no idea who you're talking about. No, Kuve in the chat. He just said, can you read what Merc just said back to us? And because I, I just spoke words, you can't read spoken words. So I would infer that Kuve was talking about words on a, on a screen there. So I yeah, wanted to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, never mind. Um, like, I see a lot of people actually getting frustrated about this. Yeah. A lot of people are frustrated because it's basically we're four years further. Or uh, most of people feel like they're four years older and nothing actually changed except uh, a riot fail. Um, I found actually uh, riot was actually interesting at first, but yeah, it failed. Um, it wasn't where it needed to be. Let us just say it like that. Um, and uh, yeah. The um, oh weapon, the weapons, uh, those uh, weird weapons that they actually added to the game. There was also not really the uh, most fun experience for a lot of people. Yeah, for this for the time that they've had the game. Yeah, for the time they had the game, it were more failures, if I actually need to say it like that. They're actually um, things that they can say. Okay, they did good. No. Yeah, but in this time of them doing this, I, I, I just mentioned this earlier, is that instead of going and trying to push things out that are easy, like modeling, making the weapons, putting cash up stuff out, they didn't do that. Or they did some of it, but that wasn't their strong point. They weren't pushing it. They were making it a constant or a vagrant thing. And that's what I liked about it, is they were just... And they even changed the... the for within their power, they changed the way uh, cash... Uh, what is it? chance boxes were or like joker mystery boxes like with uh the joker store what do you I, think I actually like... of the joker store like i have uh, a desk you so for it being a free-to-play approach even though i have a job i have money i'm completely fine but i only i'm frugal i like buying what i actually need i don't like just owning everything um for a person that you know if they don't make much income uh enough for things that you know they they, they could pay their rent they can do all that but they can't really put it into a video game as much as they want to it's nice because for the the time um that you go through and play the game i mean the system is there it gives you a chance to get the joker mystery box weapons or the legendaries personally i don't care for them much but that doesn't mean i think they're unimportant um it's it's nice it's nice to see that how they change the uh the, the setup for it so you don't have to spend money to necessarily get into it but like you can spend money to get the tickets uh, the tickets and stuff but it's not the main way to do it either way uh you can still get them in game and be completely fine with it like uh True. it's it, a long it's grind still... it, it's a long grind let us say it like yeah. that yeah and in the state that it's in i yeah i see it's a long grind but there's not much <laughs> like other extra content for uh like game modes or features and things or events that they can go and run and do like if we were going to talk about you know if you had some clan events uh like if they had a game mode or something that goes on that is like how many missions you guys have in this area how much territory you've kept or it's like oh you guys did the most bank robberies or heist in this area and you built if they had some system you know having clan reputation it'd be like oh you guys get a a ticket bonus you guys get like 0.3 ticket bonus or they have certain events where it's like okay you you get a you get a bonus uh for just finishing a mission say if you're getting 20 you're gonna get 25 and uh it, it's for that with the people that don't have the money to go buy things it kind of sucks but you necessarily like don't need it like you could look at something like what kube was talking about with the ursus um which is a uh, I, I mean I, I like the gun but i would prefer using uh, the 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 Entech uh, the Entech five rifle, which is uh, completely accessible in the game, because the Entech five and the Ursus have the same uh, time to kill, except Ursus has one less bullet for um, shots shots to kill, and so it becomes a preference, and that's like the thing between them. It's just because you 
people hear the gun shoot less, they think it's overpowered, but really it's it it's the same amount of time it takes as the gun that you can buy in game. I see. I have one more question. Um and that's probably for the Xbox and the PlayStation people. Uh, I see backport console support for Xbox One, Xbox X, PS4, and PS5. And make a minimum changes to the UI. Well, APB, um, like we getting the 130, will we get actually to see an update for the console versions? Do you think we so, will actually see a, an update like 130 on the consoles or not? Yeah, so that's what they're talking about for backport. And what, uh, for as far as that, what I'm, what I'm having from my personal experience in a setup is uh is a baseline and so let's say uh you have uh you just bought a used car from somebody yes and you want to you want to baseline the maintenance you don't care what the other guy said oh i changed the oil i changed the tires i changed the air filter mm -hmm. i you know you baseline it so you change everything yourself and you know the mileage that it's at and you're starting from a new point on now i know it's it's the concept that I'm explaining. It's not very direct. Oh, baselining a car's maintenance to a game engine, but they're setting it to a baseline where they they can start, not what the previous company can start with. So they're getting to somewhere where they can start from and know what they're doing. Not okay. We took what the previous company did and we're working up from that. We're doing our thing, so we understand what we're doing. So I I, I like that they're making this approach because it's going to make it it should should make it very clean for them to go forward with this question like hmm? do you think that sony and microsoft are going to accept it like in the past but g1 they actually uh, sony actually closed the updates for apb hmm. that's what i heard back in the day like uh, sony didn't want to actually update anything anymore for apb and uh, Alo also uh, showed that in a text that they couldn't put any updates on uh, the console version. Uh, will this actually make that uh, Sony and Microsoft give their yes word uh, for actually updating uh, the console servers? So are you talking about they <clears throat> they wouldn't update it? No, uh, back in the day, like what I heard when uh, G1 was still owner of uh, the company, uh, Gareth was still owner of the company, um, I heard that Sony said um, we're not letting you update this version of the game anymore. I'm not, I'm not I don't know about it. I, I know that I, I played it on Xbox though, so I'm not too... Yeah, I don't know if it's actually true or not. That's what I heard from uh, people saying. And also read on one of the posts that uh, Allo wrote. Because um... the way console updates work is uh, they have to submit it. And then uh, for them having a license on it, uh, as far as like if the royalties are still the same way when they do an update, uh, they have to like pay a certain service to get pushed forward to the servers and then they have to wait for it to be in queue for their game to be updated. I followed a lot of this because I used to play, uh, you know, about the game Smite. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, for, so the way, uh, the, the way they worked, uh, the, the way they worked that was again about a baseline or keeping their updates in queue with each other. So everything that was on PC was as close as being synonymous or in line of uh, what the update was with the console version. Uh, I, I don't know about that update thing that happened because I stopped playing the console version at that time, but I'm mostly a PC player. Like I've been around since RTW. Like yeah, I'm not true, true, like, true. oh, I've, like I've been around, you know, I'm one of those elite players. It's like, no, I've, I've been around the game for a long time and I've, I've paid attention to what the devs have said or what's been said. It's as, my time. Engine. I have also an old uh, account in Smite. Like I've been there too. Um, in here i have also an old account oh, a decent yeah. old account I, I've I know also, how the... i've been also a long time a veteran of apb i've been also a long uh, time a veteran of uh, smite i've been also a long veteran in other games too yeah uh, it's um 
that's the thing I'm talking about. Like I, I understand, uh, cause it's, uh, I, I, I look at this as a, uh, cause I, I experienced this as a mechanic as people see me as like, I worked on cars and now I work on motorcycles. People are like, how can you take this one thing and relate it to another, another thing? thing? And, and it doesn't, people will see it that it, it's not like the same thing because they're two different machines. But that is that in the same self of you have the game on console, but then you have another game on console. Like, no, 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 that update thing, it, it can't work the same way because they're two different games. And it's like, no, it, it starts at an update. It starts at royalty fees. It starts at a publishing fee. Like, it's all the same process because a game is just a game at that point. And the way it gets updated to console is the same way, no matter what, even between companies. So for APB, mm -hmm. as far as I know, did they not want to pay the royalties? Did they not want to like push it forward? Because that's what I'm talking about with G1 and some of their excuses, the whole back burner thing. I was joking about that earlier. You know, they make excuses. They say, oh, we can't do this because of this. And as far as we know, for them not being clear about it, they were just like, oh, they won't let us update. And it's like, well, actually, I don't think that's that's true because that's not how that works and there's some people they think you know even though they're just a consumer they're just a person playing the game uh, oh you you guys wouldn't know better you just play video games you don't you don't know anything about development so there's those little bits of things that i know about it of how it goes into it that i understand that makes me question uh i know it's little orbits like it's not in their time or business to be like hey we have to explain it to you to what happened but hey guys quote unquote you guys know the previous company was garbage but it's that it's it's uh it's past the point where they have to explain anything because everything is on them instead of them really going straight forward and making a lot of excuses or saying things that be it like this is because of g1 this is because of g1 this is because of g1 there this is what we are doing uh -huh. and i i i, I like I, I i like that transparency okay i see i can yeah. totally agree what you what you say yeah um i'm going to be probably more skeptical about stuff like the 130, I would like to see when it's actually going to be released right now. Um, if they actually have a date right now, it would be awesome if we could actually get some more information or have a talk with a uh, with Matt Scott maybe uh, yeah. to see how his vision actually uh, develops a bit more than that we actually read on the roadmap. That would be actually cool. Um, I'm going to try to contact Matt Scott. I have no idea if I'm going to see it to maybe make a stream or make uh, some information. So, uh, but this is going to be it for me for actually asking questions and also streaming. Yes, yeah, that's that. That's that's why I was setting it out. Is that the the the, the biggest point for me is I I like the fact that they're being honest of what they're doing and the their honesty of what they're doing is they're fixing it technically. They're fixing it programming wise versus we're just going to dump quote content, guns, clothing, uh, car kits. I like that they're telling us this, like we're going to fix it. Not as far as we can get it, but we we're going to fix it where we need to have it so we can push forward. And I know people are going to say, well, in the meantime, do you think you can release some things? They might, you know, that's, that's, that's nice. If they do that, that's, that's neat. You know, we're getting some content. It's not gameplay changing. You know, they're just adding more aesthetics. And like I was saying earlier, a canvas, that's all your clothing, your car, and your guns with weapons skins is a canvas because this game is about customization, personality. Like if they, if they add some things, cool, but them going and being, we want the game to run better. We want it to function better. We want to be able to make it where we have our developers can work with this product so we can get you a better product in the long run. I like that. And I know it's the, you're making a point about the load time stuff. You, you don't worry about that, but that's just that load time thing. It's just a staple of what they're saying. There's a lot of other stuff they have to think about. Like, yeah, um, probably. like, you know, what happened um, years ago with shotguns, like, uh, uh, the um, particle. Yeah. The particle stuff. Spikes. Yes. Yeah. The, the sprites so that was a thing that i i don't know why it took g1 to not fix this in the beginning because this is like uh a normal thing for if you're doing rendering in video games for instance is that the when that sprite was popping up it was generating a texture instead of referencing it so it would just 
dump into your video RAM and trying to copy this file to pop up on your screen versus referencing a huge texture sheet and then referencing it off in sections and then being, oh, okay, well, it's it's already loaded in your RAM as one smaller file and it's referencing it. We don't have to pull. We don't have to generate something and load up your RAM. It's already there. Like, it's, it's basically cookie cutting a big texture and then it's showing you it versus, okay, we have a file or we have a series of files and we're going to pull it from your hard drive and try to send it as fast as we can to your GPU to make that particle pop up. And that was a weird thing to me where I'd never thought about it till then. I was like, yeah, why, why the hell was that a thing in the game? Like that's, that's optimization right there. It's the little things like that for them making those steps, making it run better. Cause you're going to have a person who is more pleased with, you know, say like a better running car that is an absolute exterior shit box than a guy who has a really nice looking car that doesn't run really well. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, um, thanks for uh, coming on, uh, Mark. Uh, Welcome. Yeah. Um, still have some uh, mixed feelings. Uh, I don't know. Probably hey, because if... of what I read uh, and stuff. Uh, you definitely explained a lot of, well, for me actually, a lot of uh, things. So thank you for that. Uh, but I'm going to close off my stream. Uh, my parents are already yelling. That's why. Uh, the reason otherwise we can actually talk till um, two more hours or something, I think. Uh, but yeah, yeah, thanks for um, joining here's, us. Here's a health PSA thing, though. This is not related to the game. We have other things that we have in Occupy in life. APB yeah. is a part of what we enjoy, right? Yeah. So even if this is going on, we have so much else to do. Not saying APB isn't important, and this goes for everybody in the stream. We have so many other things in life that we have to wait for, and this is just part of it. This is something we have an interest. We all have different interests. So as much as I say, this isn't okay, this is going on, but we can wait for it. We've, like for the people, it's been 12 years. It'd be like, hey, come on, you know, we're waiting. There's the people that have given up, and there's the rest of us that are still here. And that's what we can hold over a lot of people. And the fact that we care about this, even if we're disgruntled, even if we're happy, that shows we care about this, and that's what matters. So we give that positive support to the dev crew and just get that onto them. That's what matters. Even if it's something we don't like, we just be at like, well, at least you are doing something. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for uh, being here. And um, I'm going to check if I can send uh, people through to somebody else. Um, let's see. Uh, who can actually... I don't... I'm gonna take... Uh, he's not talking, he's not talking. Great. And he's not playing. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, I'm going to actually um, host a friend. Or actually, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to host a friend. Um, that's great. Thanks for watching, have a great day. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.